Here's the Logi new MX Master 4 mouse. I'm gonna give you a quick review and tell you a serious problem about using this on Mac. I'm assuming you already have the MX Master 3, so we're gonna compare them back to back, apples to apples on the Apple. They work great. The MX Master 3 feels great. Um, they feel very similar. They, this one feels a little heavier, but also it's not broken in, so underneath I don't have any modifications. You can see they're both pretty clean on the bottom. I've used this for about a day now, but for some reason, the new one feels a little bit more inertia when I drag it. The actual things that are different are on the side, the fins or whatever on the side where you rest your thumb. Going forward and backward, it's a little smoother. So there's kind of some play forward and back. But on the new one, it's a little more rubbery and the patterns are dotted. So there's a cross, there's a cross pattern so it actually catches a little more forward and backwards, so you can feel a little more grip on it. Um, this definitely feels a little more fun and fidgety on the side, so you can, you can see there's, if you can hear it, there's some nice little thumb action, if you like that. And that, that was just not a thing on the old mouse. Comparing back to back, you can look, there's a little bit of a nib there, and there is one extra button. There's an extra button here, but we're going to talk about that, and that's a serious problem in a second. And I got the frosted version, so this is the gray version. So, I mean, it looks fine. The buttons are a little wider. The, you can see they go right around. They're not wasting any real estate. Uh, here they're wasting some real estate around the, around the flywheel. Obviously, they feel great. You know, this is the number one mouse for a reason, especially on Mac. And let me just show you how I use it. So I use this with Better Mouse which is the only way to use a mouse on Mac. Uh, we have better mouse set up and you have your own curves set up. The curves are comparable. Between the two mice, I feel like you can use similar curves and get by. So if there's a slightly different DPI, I didn't notice it because it is perfectly fine for me. But now here's the problem. The way that I have my mouse configured is, this is a secret. You've got a couple buttons here. Main, primary, secondary. Scroll wheel, okay? Keep up. Extra button. Forward, backward. And then this thing. What do you think this is? A scroll wheel? No. It's a capacitive touch wheel. So I have it configured just like this. When I tap it, in every app, it does this. And it's barely a tap. It's like a little, like you can get close to it, and it does that. I do this all the time. It can do it here. We can do it in... Any, we can do it in Finder. Second button here in the middle, closes window. And same thing, capacitive touch. No change on that. Nobody scrolls left to right. There's no reason to use this as a scroll wheel. I don't even know why it's there. It's just my capacitive touch button. It's so useful. Um, I was really concerned that they were gonna mess that up. If you compare the two mice back to back, you can see that there's a little bit of extra plastic on the new one here. So it kind of slows you down from getting to it. I mean, unless you use Excel all day for very wide spreadsheets and you don't know how to make a spreadsheet, I guess. But I thought like this was kind of fun to kind of throw your thumb down there. And if you cared about that, you're not going to have that same experience on the new one. So you're kind of lost. But none of that matters because you're just going to use it for capacitive touch when you set that up. And real fast, if you don't know how to do that, then you come down here and you set your thumb wheel to use your thumb wheel as a button. And that is just hands down the way to use the mouse. I mean, that, that really just makes this mouse. And then for your button, what you do is you set your middle button. So for me, the way this thing works is you just press any button and then you assign it to whatever. So my default is just Command W. And then um, for exceptions, every one of my apps has exceptions. So for Zen Browser, that's because there's no standard way to hide or show the side thing. In Zen, there is actually a keyboard shortcut to show or hide the sidebar and so I have to assign that specifically for this app for Zen. And then all my apps have it. Typora has it. It's a different key combination. And so you're going to want to set that up. Definitely worth the investment. But um, yeah, it works great. Here's the problem. Here's the fatal problem with the new mouse. So jump to this section. Watch what happens. On the old one, you can assign this button here. It's button five. Okay. On the new mouse, this thing is button six, and this is also button six. The button five is this thing over here. So you're not getting an extra button. 
they just double mapped the button. You lost the button. You gained a button, you lost the button. What the hell is the point of that? So I don't know what Logitech uses those buttons for. If you're gonna use the Logi software, that's your problem and you can watch some other video on that. But um, I mean, it looks nice, you know. I mean, I would buy it for the Frosted if you really like the Frosted. I don't know what I'm gonna use the side button for. You can tell me what I should map it to. But there you go. That's you know everything I know about the four, the three, and um, looking for your feedback too. Cheers.